What is up everybody, Deck here, and today I'm going to be covering the topic of inverse mounting versus regular mounting of speakers in speaker enclosures. So first off, I'm going to be using a standard one cubic foot roughly speaker enclosure sealed, and I'm going to be putting using this example driver right here, which is just supposed to simulate the average 12 inch woofer. Now the first cover topic I'm going to be covering is SPL versus sound quality. Now the most important thing regarding SPL or sustained SPL is thermals. Say we've got a sealed speaker enclosure right here with the motor system inside. When we run tones through it, our music for example, we can see that it starts to accumulate heat within the enclosure. Say we had a 5% efficient speaker, which is not too uncommon for your sealed speaker or subwoofer. If it was a 1000 watt driver, which is quite a powerful driver, but still within reason, 95% of that energy going into it is being turned into heat with 5% being turned into sound. That 95% being turned into heat is 950 watts, which is, yeah, almost the 1000 watts of heat. So when you think about a one cubic foot sealed speaker running a thousand watts, which sure isn't particularly common, but 250 watts is very common. You can't really imagine that speaker getting hot. And that's because a lot of that heat is actually trapped inside. When running, say, a 250 watt sub near max, it can experience a duty cycle of about, say, 25%, which means it's only running about 60 watts on average over the course of an hour, and that's about the amount of heat it puts out. But you can't run at 250 watts for an entire hour. It can easily overheat. So one way to prevent it from overheating is to inverse mount it. Here we've got the magnet and motor system outside of the enclosure so it's in the cool air and when we run tones through it we can see that most of this heat gets carried away into the open environment rises with convection and the whole system stays cool and can run more power for a longer period of time now for example say we're going to say it's in a vented system or a fourth order bandpass as seen right here when running the driver in the sealed side, magnet in the sealed side of the fourth order bandpass, once again heat accumulates and you can see here with this colour gradient, a bit of heat does make it through the dust cap to warm this air up in here, which is then transferred out via the port, but we can see it's still not very effective. A lot of this heat is trapped in here and it needs to make its way out somehow and that is mainly through the cone which is the thinnest material the most thermally conducted material compared to the plywood or mdf so we can see that it does run quite a bit hotter if we were to inset inverse mount it now we have the port right here right next to the driver any heat generated by the driver can easily be taken out of the enclosure through the port and we can run louder for longer this also simulates a ported speaker enclosure so if there are any questions about that, ported speak enclosures and inverse mounting have about the same thermal properties. Next thing to cover is more to do with the sound quality side, which is turbulence and motor noise. In order to stay cool, subwoofers incorporate many vents in order to get fresh air to the voice call. Now when doing a cross section of the driver, we can see that when it moves up, you can draw air through these channels and it rushes up against the voice call which provides a lot of direct cooling. A lot of cool air directly onto the voice call can drastically improve power handling of drivers. Also using a pole vent can drastically improve power handling too as cool air can make it up here. But as you can see right here and here, when it's moving up and down it can create a lot of turbulence, a lot of wind noise which can be unpleasant for the listener. So if you're going for sound quality it's best to do a standard mount of a driver rather than inverse mount. An example of a driver with quite a few vents right here is the Sundown NSV4 12 inch or 10 inch. I can't remember specifically which one this is, but you can see it's got plenty of vents around the side here and a pole vent right here and air rushes in and out during operation in order to keep the voice call nice and cool for good power handling, though this can be at the detriment of sound quality. So in this example, I'd suggest a standard mount into a speaker enclosure. Now I should also note that this driver is optimized for a ported enclosure so it will still get plenty of cooling through the port. Next topic is more to do with mid ranges which is waves and reflections. Say we've got our standard mount speaker right here, 
if we were to play a higher frequency through it, we can see that the wave front coming from the back uh, reflects throughout the enclosure and is quite chaotic, which is actually quite beneficial in the, and I'll show you that later. And the wave out the front towards the listener is unobstructed clean and should be quite well defined. Now when comparing this to an inverse mount, when running another high frequency through it, we can see that the frequency waves travel backwards, reflect off the rear of the enclosure, travel forwards again, and hit the diaphragm. Now what can happen here is it can sound like an echo, which can muddy up the sound and lose a lot of definition. Another thing that can happen is if the waves leave and arrive at the same time and at certain frequencies, what will happen is as the driver moves forward or into the enclosure, it produces a wave, a positive wave, which travels backward, reflects off the rear wall, comes forward, and if it's the positive wave arrives back at the cone as it's trying to produce another positive wave, it'll act like it's pushing into a higher pressure than is actually in the enclosure, and this can lead to cancellation, where its output is drastically reduced. Another thing is waves that travel out of the or rear of the speaker towards the listener are heavily obstructed by the magnet system, which can also reduce definition and imaging, which is when you can tell where the sound is coming from on a stereoscopic stage. Now the next topics are form and function. So these aren't so much to do with power handling, but more convenience. The first one is terminals. If you are going to standard mount your speaker, of course you need power to get to the motor system and that requires the use of terminals. For example, right here, this is just a simple illustration of a terminal, but we can see that the cords go from the driver to the terminal, then off to the amplifier. Now, if instead you were wanting to skip out on using terminals, you could instead inverse mount the driver, such as here, and use terminals which are already on the driver. For example, this driver right here, the Ground Zero 15 Max has nice spring terminals already on it, which would do quite well as terminals for a speaker enclosure. For a replacement of terminals on a speaker enclosure, you could just wire straight to the rear of the driver if it's inverse mounted. Now, next thing which I, I have overlooked before, which is why I'm mentioning it now, is balance. We'll have a look once again at the standard mounting of the speaker and if we have a look at the center of mass for the enclosure and the driver itself we can see that the center of mass for the entire enclosure with speaker is roughly in the middle right here so this green arrow right here represents the center of mass for the system in order to tip this speaker enclosure we need to move the center of mass forward past the fulcrum relative to gravity in order for it to tip forward which as you can see is quite steep this enclosure is very unlikely to tip over. Though if we instead inverse mount the driver, we can see here that there's a lot of weight out the front of it compared to out the back and the center of mass is only just barely this side of the fulcrum, which means it's very easy to tip over. All it has to do is be jostled slightly, cornering just slightly too fast and this thing will tip over. Now the next thing is space efficiency. An inverse mounted sub just naturally has a larger footprint. See 32 centimeters for the enclosure, 16 centimeters for the driver itself, leads to 48 centimeters total. Now comparing that to the standard enclosure, we have the same amount of speaker enclosure volume and even less of a footprint because the driver magnet system is inside the enclosure. So it ends up being having a 30% smaller footprint, which is excellent for space saving. Something else you could do is if you we're thinking of doing an inverse mount in order to have a higher power handling. What you could do is instead have a larger enclosure. So now instead of a one cubic foot, one and a half cubic foot, and you could vent this enclosure as it's larger, it'll be a bit better for venting than the sealed enclosure. And also of course, luggage and environment. Say you've got a standard speaker. If you chuck things in the boot, uh, of a car standard sub. If you chuck things in the bit of a car, potentially things could hit the cone, damage the cone, push the cone in, basically reduce its operational effectiveness. So what you'd have to do is you'd also have to get grills for this speaker in order to protect the cone. If you were to instead inverse mount the driver, the basket naturally acts like grills. Things shouldn't hit the cone as frequently. Another thing is anything magnetic or ferrous. 
ferromagnetic. If you had metal filings or maybe other metal things in the boot or maybe even in just a workshop environment, in a standard mount speaker system, there would be no temptation for these things to stick to the magnet as the magnet sealed away from them. But in an inverse mount situation, things can easily stick to the magnet, get stuck on it. And this can be particularly problematic if these ferrous particles are inside the voice call gap, which is where the strongest part of the magnetic field is concentrated. So this is an ideal, isn't ideal for an environment where any metal filings are present. Another thing is dirt, dust, moisture, rain, things like that. With a standard mount for a speaker, you can see that no dust makes it inside the enclosure, which means that the motor system can stay free from contaminants and can operate reliably and effectively. Though in the inverse mount situation, you can see that you can inhale dust, moisture can get onto components, uh, can potentially dissolve solvents and cause chaos. Something else to mention is most drivers intended to be operated in high moisture environments such as uh, marine grade woofers are designed to be standard mounted, not to be inverse mounted. So I believe that covers just about everything you might be thinking about. Uh, thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more similar content. If you could think of anything else or want to add some words of wisdom in the comments, feel free to do so. And if you have any comment, uh, questions too, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. See ya.